Who are some of your influence DJ wise? <clears throat> oh man. Uh first and foremost, uh my man O Love, Omari Jones, that's the dude who got me, you know, you don't really understand some shit until you see it firsthand. And I just went over his crib one day and he had all these records. I always liked to have music first. That was always I wanted to get it before anybody and put all the homies up on it. Right. So I went over his crib and he had all these promo twelve inches and then you learn that that's the first that's the first format for any new music and sometimes it can be up to like a year ahead of when the public gets it so I just started buying my records you know what I mean that's because of him he was like two years younger than me too uh, DJ Dez Andres major major uh, you know influence that's my man um, of course all the you know Jazzy Jeff even like DJ Magic Mike you know what I mean? Florida. Mr. Mix from the Two Live Crew, like mm -hmm. on some DJ shit, like those DJ joints at the end of the first three Two Live Crew records were crazy. He was right. fucking that shit up. You like know Mix what I mean? Old something. Or... Yeah, Mr. Mix on the mix or yeah. some shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? Volume one, two, three. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many fucking great DJs. But those are the primary ones. Jazzy Jeff had me. The first time I heard that shit, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? How's he doing? Oh, and people don't understand, <laughs> like the mixers back in the day, like that fader, that fader was like fucking concrete, like mm -hmm. it ain't, faders now were like butter, like you right. could sneeze on that shit and it goes all the way to the other side, but these faders were fucking hard, and for him to be hitting that shit so fluid on that transformer is fucking amazing. Dope. You're also a producer, what came first, um, DJing or producing? They both kind of came at the same time. How did you get into producing? Uh, my homies, I was a part of this crew called 31, 31 Flavors. And uh, Beej and Spot made the majority of the beats. And Beej was featured on uh, Welcome, to, Welcome to Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so they had a four track and they had this little fucking battery powered sampler. You could just loop shit on it, like up to 16 seconds long. So they would loop some drums up and, you know, find some samples, loop that shit up, and just watching how simple it was, I was like, man, let me let me borrow that shit for a couple of days. Started fucking around at the crib, you know what I mean? Uh, from there, you know, I met, met JD at the record shop at Street Corner Music that I used to work at, and we just started linking and we go over Amp Fiddler's crib, or I go over Jay's down in the basement in my Duke's whole crib. And I would pick a record out, and he would chop that shit up for me in the 1200 and the 950, and he would just leave. He'd go to the strip club. <laughs> and I'd be in my Duke's basement till like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes the sun would be coming up, and I'd just leave and lock up. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I still got all them discs around here somewhere. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, you got a lengthy discography. Um, can you tell the viewers some of the artists you've produced for in the past? Oh, man. Quelle Chris, Rock Marciano, Guilty Simpson, Proof, JD. Oh, shit. Now look at the wall. Big Tone, uh, Danny Brown. A lot of shit, man. I mean, just on my album itself, I, you know, it was like 30 motherfuckers rapping on there, and you know all the names, you know, Alchemist, mm -hmm. fucking Oh No, uh, Black Spade, uh, Jametta Rose. It's a whole bunch of other shit, too. So far, uh, production wise, what do you think your greatest accomplishment has been so far up to this point? Uh, it's a song called Castles. Uh, without a doubt, me and Jamena Rose, and it was a tribute to our homie J1 who passed away. He used to play drums for Dame Funk, and uh, yeah, it's just a fucking gorgeous record. It just it makes me feel the same way ten years later wow. as the first. Like when I was making that beat, it was some other shit. It was like, God damn, this shit's gonna be crazy. And when Jamena sent me the vocals back, it was like, wow. 
you know, I met people come up to me in a record in a record store or at a grocery store and tell me how important that song is to them. And they took it in their own way because it seemed really specific when we created it. Like, this is for Jay. Mm -hmm. But it, there's still vague, not vagueness to it, but it's still, you know, as open ended to where you can accept it in your own personal way. And that's some, that's some shit. That shit's just magic. It just makes me fucking feel fantastic. I get emotional when I hear that shit. You know what I mean? Honestly, still.